the best way that we've found to terminate wires on a boat so that they last decades rather than um, a month or two. So first step, if you haven't got any of these, this is the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend when you're doing wiring. It's basically a wire stripper. So just like a, almost like a pair of pliers, but basically it grips onto the wire, takes the sheath off, and then you can go and it strips two wires down. You've got, you know, whatever sort of length you need. So it's a super easy way of getting cabling done. So first time saving tip is buy a pair of these. You will not regret it. The next thing you want to do is make sure you've got the right size terminal for the wire that you're trying to join onto. Now in this case, it's, I don't know what physical size it is, but it's a blue terminal that I need that matches. There's no special rules there. Just make sure you get one that's nice and tight. Now these are resin impregnated terminals. So I'll do a close up of these so you can see what's different about them. Resin impregnated terminals. You'll see this blue stuff comes right down over the crimp. The crimp itself is actually further back than normal. What you'd see in like say an automotive crimp and the resin impregnated heat shrink goes right down beyond that there. So when you crimp this, the resin stops any uh, moisture being able to wick up the end and go into your cabling. And then also you've got a long run of heat shrink at this end as well, which seals down. Now, because it's resin infused, it glues onto your cable. So you end up with a really, really watertight um, join. Now you don't want to solder any of these fittings onto your cables. You want to crimp them only because if you solder it, you put a hard point into the wire and then vibration can make it crack. So crimping allows a small amount of flexibility and the glue on this basically holds it put. The other thing you'll need is, in order to use the resin infused uh, crimpers, you need a set of crimps that have square jaws. So you can sort of see these here when they close, they're like a flat rectangle. Um, and that's basically the full closed position. The reason being is because if you crimp this and you end up breaking the heat shrink, like piercing through it, you essentially create a hole that water can wick into. So by using these crimpers that have the square ends on them or the rectangle ends, you end up flattening it, but you don't put, uh, burst through the resin infused heat shrink. For cabling on a boat, you always want to try and use tin cable. So tin cable basically looks like this. I don't know if you can quite see the color in that, but it's silver cable compared to just straight copper that you normally see in a house or anywhere on land. The difference being is the tin cable holds up to um, corrosion a lot better than like normal household um, copper cable. It's not always possible to get tinned cable. So there's sort of a myth that everything on a boat should be tinned. Yeah, in an ideal world, absolutely. Um, but it's not possible to get it in every conductor size. It is actually, once you get outside the normal sort of twin sheath stuff, it starts to get a lot harder to get. Um, so uh, if, if you use the right connections and the right terminals and things like that, and you, and you properly seal off every end, you can use standard copper-based um, conductors, but you do have to make sure you cannot use the stuff that would go in a house. It, house cabling is much stiffer. It might have, say, three or six or nine strands sort of thing, five, seven, you know, not a lot of numbers, whereas a boat cable like this cable here, for example, has probably got maybe, I don't know, 19 to 30 or something like that. Like it's very small conductor, but lots and lots of them. And that means when it's in a boat and it's sort of jiggling around and doing all sorts of crazy stuff like that, it won't break. Whereas if you have stiff house cable in your boat, it will break. So that's the main reason why you should never use house cable in a boat. It's not about the tinned or not tinned, it's about the vibration breaking it. So you want to make sure the ends that you just cut on the little wire stripper things, you want to make sure that the the stripped end is no bigger than the length of the crimp inside your terminal. So when you put your terminal on, it's a bit hard to see, but the, the, um, the sheathing that you have on the actual terminal itself, the terminal crimp butts up hard against that sheathing and it basically gives it more stiffness. So you wanna then use the right crimp, give it the heebie-jeebies, and then that litmus test is make sure it doesn't come loose. So you gotta make sure it's nice and tight. That not only means that you have a connection that lasts for a long time, but it also means that you're gonna get a decent electrical connection in there as well. So always do that pull test on all of your connections. If it fails, it's a good thing because it gets you a chance to start again and do it properly. Last bit is heat shrinking these. So when heat shrinking these, the resin infused stuff takes a bit more heat than normal. So you need a pretty decent heat gun. You could probably get away with like cheap basic ones, but you might have to just hang around quite a bit longer on the actual terminal to get it to seal. You can see the terminal itself goes, the, uh, the heat shrink goes transparent as it glues on. And then you can also see that it's fused down really well onto the actual metal terminal. So that'll be a waterproof connection for life.